We're going to start this puppy up. Clear, drop. Now I'd like to get started on finishing up the aileron controls and that involves the bell crank here and that of course come out to the ailerons themselves with the horn which I don't have on here and of course we have a connection a cable that goes from here to our pulley and then down and I found a problem with our horn our bell crank horn that we built and let's take a look at it and the horn I'm talking about is the one right here. The stick makes it go left and right. And I'm going to pull the horn off and take it to the bench and show you what I see as the problem. By problem, I mean that I'm going to have to remake it again. Let's take a look. Now, here's the horn. I just removed it. The problem is that we need to connect cables to both ends. And the most common way to attach a cable is with a shackle like this one. See if I hold it, it's got the holes in the middle. And if we use that to attach, we'll see that we run out of room down below. Now, it was probably my fault. I made this a little too literally to the plans and not enough room was left. Now, we could move it inboard, but then we're gonna lose the throw because remember, it rotates in the middle and the closer we come in, the less movement up and down it goes. So I wanna maintain the full distance so that we have all of the throw when this rotates because this determines how far our ailerons will deflect. So here, is the horn and of course the difference is whoops got it turned sideways there the difference is that I've left a lot more material down here so this allows me to place the shackle all the way out towards the end as far as I need to go match the plans and have all of the room so that it fits and rotates properly and is attached in the proper manner so that it straddles the angle rather than sits outside of it like that. So for the val and by the way, if you notice here we go. <laughs> New one and the old one. Notice how the holes are not nearly out towards the end, which we can now use all the way out to the end rather than inboard. So we'll get the full throw of being all the way outboard. So I have placed my hole about 10 millimeters down and 10 millimeters in. So we're taking full advantage of the total length. And here's what looks like, here's what the shackle looks like installed. It has full motion. And notice also that uh, we have to use a castellated nut and a cotter pin because we don't want to tighten this down. And that's the rule, right? If you don't tighten a nut and bolt down, then that means you're intending it to move, which we want it to move, and then a cotter pin through a castellated nut will keep it from coming off and retain the motion. Now, our next step then is to assemble our cable and thimble through this and attach the end of each wire at each end and then, of course, the other end will go up to the top of the fuselage. But on the bench, we can use our crimp 
and nicopressin crimp our wire cable end in place at the bottom at both ends first and then go assemble this if we want later. So I have prepared a end. I got my thimble and the Nyko press and squeezed it on with the three squeezes. Basically this is an easy one because you can do it just by itself like this. Then you take one of these shackles and they're made to just slip right on like that and then you can attach to your horn like we did before slipping it over and putting a nut and bolt through like we did right here with this one. So we'll make uh, two of these. Now the other end of this wire we have to string up to the top of the fuselage long enough to reach that bell crank and we'll go take a look at that next. After installing the horn we want to get it level parallel to the ground and that's where the stick should be in its neutral position from left to right. And then I hooked up the one cable that we just created and I'm doing this one at a time, haven't done the other one yet, and then routed the cable up up to our pulley around the pulley and then going to our control here. So in other words, I cut the cable long enough to go over the pulley and then back until our rotating bell crank here. And we're going to put another shackle at this location. And here's a look from above. I am preparing to swage this. Basically I have it routed over the pulley and when this is pulled taut at 90 degrees I check that the cable looks nice and taut and then down below our horn is parallel to the ground. I have marked with a marker on the far side of this uh, swage thimble or the, uh, the actual ferrule I guess they call it the part we're going to squeeze. That way what I'm going to do is take this off and I can take the whole cable to the bench where it's much easier to swage this and my mark here just reminds me when I set this up for swaging where the edge should be for both of these wires and then I can swage it on the bench and then come back and assemble it and it will be in exactly the right position. And I really did misspeak. We cannot swage this on the bench. Remember that we cannot feed our cable through the pulley because it has a shackle at the end unless you want to take the pulley apart and you can certainly do that. I rather am going to leave this. I disconnected the shackle down at the bottom and simply pulled the cable forward and it is now dangling off the edge of our rear wing spar and very easy to swage it right here and then we can reassemble almost like the bench and there we go with one side finished so as I hold this taut we're roughly 90 degrees it doesn't have to be exact and what we're going to do now is go build the other cable starting from the bottom like we did and then finishing off with our last Nyko press up there. Now here we have the second cable up and I have strung it but have not swaged it yet. And the idea here is that we are going to pull it tight and get everything just right nice and taut on both sides 
And when you get it to that point, we're going to mark it so that we know exactly where to swage it. I'm going to do this off camera because I don't have enough hands to do all of this at one time. But you get the idea that you can set it up, put everything in place, get both sides nice and taut, mark it like we did before, then pull the bolt out, disconnect it from the bottom, pull the cable away, and at your leisure, line up the lines that you marked and swage it in place, and then reinstall. And there's our final cabling. And check that it's taut, but not real taut, just not super sloppy. Should have the ability to never fall off the pulleys. Now we need to install our ailerons by putting in our pins, at least temporarily, all the way across. And then we'll move down to the inboard end. Now down at the end we want to install our aileron horns that we made previously. And we want the flat side going towards the inside of the plane because we're going to slip these on over the end. And they'll be approximately, let's say, 90 degrees towards, in reference to the uh, aileron. I'm just going to push mine on here. All right, about like that. And so about, it's about 90 degrees to the aileron. Because the idea now is that we're going to have a connection between this point and this point over here. And of course, that's how it's going to move. Now, first, we need to uh, mark, set this up, drill our hole so that we can install the 3 16 bolt. So carefully find the center and go all the way through with the hole here and here and that way it will permanently attach our horn to the aileron at this point. Now before we proceed we need to get the aileron in a neutral position. Now of course that may be tricky to say what is neutral. What I'm going to choose for neutral is to follow the ribs down and make that neutral. In other words, we're basically extending the top of the wing by the width of the aileron. And another way to look at that is I'm going to take a straight edge and temporarily bungee it to here so that it is held in this neutral position because we're attaching the controls and we need to leave this in a neutral position and this will represent when the stick is in the uh, center position the left to right center position I'm going to bungee this on and then to the top of the rib and that will be our neutral position and I know some of you are saying, hey, wait a minute, following the top of the wing down will not result in a neutral aileron. And I understand what you're saying. However, for those of you actually building the plane, you will notice that the aileron pivot point where it attaches to the wing is quite a bit lower than the top of the rib so that when you put a straight edge in the way I'm showing, by the time it touches the trailing edge of the aileron, the aileron is pretty close to neutral. It's kind of like saying if you put the straight edge on the bottom of the wing and use that because the aileron is attached above the bottom of the wing, 
then the aileron would end up in a downward deflection far from neutral. So basically this is just a great mechanical way to attach everything together to get it consistent so that when you go to the other wing and set up the aileron over there both ailerons will be set at the exact same even position very close to neutral you can always adjust them later up or down as necessary and there I have it tied down in the neutral position now we have our horn locked in place and we have our belt crank in place neutral with the stick centered what we want to do is create a link using two of these rod end joints that go from this hole over to this hole over here so the easiest thing to do is to measure the distance between these two holes just using a tape ruler I like to use uh, metric because we come up with millimeters so measure carefully just the distance you can eyeball it because it doesn't have to be exact but the closer it is the better and write that number down and take it over to the bench where we're going to create our link with the threaded rod so this is pretty straightforward I've drawn two lines that represent the distance between those two holes and then I put my center of the rod end on one line and center of the hole of the other one on the other line so these two represent this is the distance we actually want and our goal now is to cut a piece of threaded rod that will give us that length I'm doing this with one hand now you should thread the rod in to find out how far it goes so you understand exactly how much of the threaded rod is taken up inside every rod end bearing is a little bit different and then that represents the maximum length now we want to back off oh maybe 3 16 or so from that line and from that line in other words make the threaded rod shorter by 3 16 at each end that gives us the ability to um, shorten these if we have to and of course we can also lengthen them but we don't want to make them too short so that the rod gets dangerously close so we're trying to keep the rod in at least three quarters of the way into each of these so that we can expand or contract a little bit for an exact fit or an adjustment later so with that information then we'll make a line as to where to cut this easiest way to cut this I find is to screw a couple of nuts up to your line and then use your hacksaw and those nuts as a guide to make a nice clean cut and then also the nut allows us to fix any damaged threads by uh, threading the nut past the cut end so I'm going to go cut my rod here by the way I'm using uh, stainless steel you can use regular uh, plated steel with the stainless steel I don't have to worry about uh, corrosion or covering the rod later but it, it's not a big deal it's just an idea it doesn't cost that much more for stainless steel and this is quarter inch and the same with these um, so they fit together and I used a Dremel cutoff wheel to cut this it was easier than a hacksaw and don't forget you need a jam nut this is just a regular nut at both ends and they're called jam nuts because after we get the length proper we will tighten it up and jam this on here and hold it tight let's go try it couple of quarter inch bolts Okay, now we can test this after removing our lock that we placed 
on our aileron, putting some nuts on here and testing out the action. Now we just have to add the one on the other side by repeating the same steps. Okay, everybody move along now. Nothing to see here. Everyone, back to building.